When you find, you, you kind of scan, you find some issues, some disturbance, some may manifest as pain, then you anchor one pad and then you search on the, on the, through the other pad, right? And so when you're doing that, are you trying to cross the joint? Are you like, what's your philosophy when you scan? Is it just kind of looking at the next best area or are you trying to go across the joint where maybe stability or anchoring would happen? How does that next step work? So I'm trying to find the, the first domino or the, the area of greatest impact. So when we find, if we have a spot here, uh, you know, on the, on the pectoral muscle, for example, and then, then what we would do is, yeah, we would, we'd figure out where to put the other pad, where to, you know, the grounding pad or the source pad or whatever you want to call it. And we would then, um, find, find the area that's going to typically, that's going to kind of maximize the impact here. Sometimes that, that spot itself might also be a hot spot or an area of greatest or greater need. And, uh, we don't necessarily need to go across the joint or, or more proximal and distal or, you know, higher up and further down. It's more about finding the area of greatest need for that person neurologically, where they have the greatest amount of, of protection or inhibition or dysfunction and working on that. So sometimes the pads will be, if I, another one here I'd show you, sometimes they'll be like right next to each other. Let's imagine, imagine this is a pad. Sometimes they'd be right next to each other. Sometimes they'll be across the joint like that. Uh, and then sometimes they'll be, you know, oriented along, you know, one lower down on the arm. So, you know, so they can be in, in different orientations. There's not necessarily a set mechanism of, yeah, we're trying to go, go across the joint or trying to have them both longitudinally along the same muscle. It's more about trying to find what is the area of greatest need for that individual person. And how many outputs or pads would you put on that joint? Obviously with the newbie, the cool thing is you have up to eight I mean, if something is a shoulder, would you kind of keep it at two or three uh, bigger joints? You'd go more like what's your philosophy on how many output, how many, you know, pads would you put on a, a joint in a given area? It depends on where we are in the, in the process. In the beginning, we are, we're doing that mapping process. We're finding these, these hot spots or areas of interest or dysfunctions or trigger points. You know, sometimes we refer to them with different words, but we, we essentially want to let the, the patient's body be our guide in the beginning and work on however many hotspots show up. And so for some people, it's two pad, you know, there's one spot and we need a grounding pad or a source pad to stimulate that. So for some people, it's just two pads. Uh, and then for some, they have, you know, eight or more hotspots. So we might be using all eight pads, even, even on a, a smaller joint, you know, uh, or smaller area of the body. So um, it's more about that, more about what's showing up, what that patient is presenting with and, and what their body's telling us in the beginning. And then as we progress, once we get out of that acute stage where we, we've worked through those, those hot spots and those kind of more immediate, more acute dysfunctions, then we want to talk about improving mechanics, about strengthening, about increasing muscle recruitment or relaxing muscles for greater range of motion. And then we can use, uh, you know, all eight pads, um, depending on what we want to do. So one of my favorites, you know, examples of this uh, is to talk about the hip. If we want to increase hip extension, we can actually use uh, a couple of the leads on the, the front side of the hip, you know, on the hip flexors, quads, adductors, on a setting that's going to help them relax more and more and more. And then on the back side of the hip, so on the glute specifically, we're thinking there um, to drive hip extension, we can actually change the setting on the device to create more contraction in those muscles. And so contraction on one side, on the back side, and relaxation on the front can help lead to greater hip extension range of motion. So uh, it depends a little bit on where we're going. Definitely um, in the beginning, we want to not necessarily work on a predetermined number of spots or pads, but, but let that patient's body be our guide.